Hello, this is Matt from TracyandMatt.co.uk and for Unboxings.com and here I have the Sony Ericsson Xperia Mini Pro. Uh, previously this has been referred to as the X10 Mini Pro 2, but indeed it is, as you can see here, now uh, referred to as the Mini Pro. So a quick unboxing video for you before we do our full review. So handset immediately on top, very small. We're going to come back to that and look at that in detail in just a moment. And also in here we have a standard USB to micro USB uh, sync charge cable. Then have a wired headset, four pole, three and a half mil jack on one end. Length cable, then an inline microphone with push button. Um, it's fairly simplistic, uh, no volume controls or anything like that on there. And then the headphones themselves, fairly typical uh, Sony Ericsson sort of headset there. Um, of which, well, the headphones aren't great. Uh, we've used these before. Um, and typically, I guess, most people will be uh, splashing out or using their own headphones. We then have the charger, again, pretty standard Sony Ericsson um, USB style charger, pretty straightforward. We then have a screen protector supplied with a small, or oh, really tiny, uh, cleaning cloth there for the screen. And then right at the bottom, underneath all this other stuff, we have my first hour, which is basically your getting started guide, and again, fairly typical Sony Ericsson Fair here in terms of it being um, rather than a booklet, it's kind of a large pull out leaflet. Uh, if you can't fold maps, don't unfold that. Uh, there's an uh, addendum there with a little note. Some important information again uh, is a fold out leaflet, and then last of all, is just our information, FCC statement, and a declaration of conformity. Um, one thing that is missing from here, Sony Ericsson have already spoken to me uh, at me about this. The uh, there would be or should be an HDMI cable supplied in the box, but the review samples that they've sent out don't currently have the HDMI cable. If you bought one of these retail, then it will have, have an HDMI cable. So let's take a look at the phone itself. Immediately, it feels really quite weighty. I think that's uh, partly because of its size and it feels quite dense. Um, but it's 136 grams, but that's an immediate impression. Something quite small um, being sort of uh, a lock you know, compressed into that small space, I suppose. On the front, we have a forward facing camera, ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, all that kind of stuff, and the speaker at the top there. We have a 3 inch display, which is half VGA, 320 by 480 pixels. Below that, touch sensitive buttons, so we have the back and the menu button and a physical push button being the home button in the centre. So you've got a combination of a capacitive touch screen or capacitive touch buttons on either side and a physical home button underneath. It is full capacitive touch screen, LED backlit as well. Looking around to the left hand side, there isn't actually anything to see on the left. On the bottom, uh, a couple of uh, holes there which is actually an eyelet for a lanyard or a phone charm indeed. On the right hand side we have dedicated camera button and up and down volume controls. On the top 3.5mm headphone jack for uh, your own headphones or the uh, supplied wired headset. Then we have a cover over the uh, micro USB connector, that's obviously for sync and charge and so forth and uh, for HDMI as well so we'll support HDMI out. And then there is the power button and toggle of uh, toggle button for the on off of the uh, controls. On the back here we have a 5 megapixel autofocus camera and underneath this little red sticker which uh, is a protective cover uh, is the LED flash which uh, well, we'll have to pull off before we do any, uh, do any photographs there. But that uh, is there and also next to that we have uh, the loudspeaker grill uh, for actually the phone ringtone and everything else. The back is um, has sort of a textured paint to it. And if we just open up the back cover, that will allow us to remove not only the cover over the flash, but also the small cover over the lens that's protecting the lens from the camera. We have a 2 gig micro SD memory card in place here already, uh, which will take up to 32 gig micro SD HD memory cards. Our SIM card slots in here, just under this position, actually into that space, just as you can sort of see by the diagram. And the battery, which I've just pulled out, is listed as a capacity of 
1,200 milliamp hours. The battery itself quite feels quite weighty as well, actually, considering its capacity. It's not a massive capacity. But it feels quite again quite dense, quite weighty. But uh, I think that uh, around the right way. That way. Uh, I think that's but again because it's quite quite dense and compact. It makes it just feel that bit weightier. There's a screen protector on the front here, which I'm not going to peel off just at the moment. We're going to leave that in place. Other thing about this being the Mini Pro is that we do have the sliding QWERTY keyboard. Mechanism feels quite good. It's spring loaded, so it springs into each of the positions. Doesn't tilt. Doesn't uh, move in any position. It just opens and closes. And considering the size of the handset. The keyboard itself is pretty generous, four rows of keys, uh, QWERTY covering the uh, first three and then symbol shifts and uh, space keys and then cursor keys like on that bottom row basically. A shortcut for the internet, uh, symbol buttons and a few other bits and pieces there as well. Uh, but a decent, decent size really considering as I say the size of the handset. Tactile push buttons feel you know, responsive enough, they make enough of a positive tick. Uh, for you to know that there, you know, you really have pushed the button. Underneath uh, here as well is where we actually have the microphone, which is partially covered when the screen's closed. We will just power up, and while we wait for it to come on, run down the rest of the spec: quad band for GSM, dual band, uh, tri band for HSDPA, and uh, we do have uh, built-in Bluetooth 2 with A2DP support. Uh, of Bluetooth 2.1 in actual fact, Wi-Fi support in 802.11 BG and N standards. Our size, well it's very small, 92mm from top to bottom, 53mm wide, but because we are compact in those two dimensions and we do have the QWERTY keyboard, we're pretty chunky. 18mm thick, uh, one of the thicker handsets we've got at the moment, but uh, the sacrifice there being for the overall physical footprint, making it thicker. And as I say, with the mechanism for the keyboard and everything else, that uh, you know contributes to that quite significantly. The five megapixel autofocus camera supports 720p video recording, and also geotagging, which is uh, well, I guess that's come to be pretty standard. The Android operating system is 2.3 Gingerbread. There's a one gigahertz uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon processor or Scorpion processor, I should say. 512 meg of RAM and 400 meg of ROM. Built-in FM stereo with uh, RDS support and then GPS with a GPS support and all the other bits and pieces pretty much that you come to expect. So if you've seen these before, uh, if you saw the other Sony Ericsson handsets, the X10 Mini, X10 in fact as well, you'll be familiar with the actual look of the operating system or the user interface and once we wait for that to unlock, we'll first of all set up the location, so we're going to use United Kingdom English, obviously and wait for that to progress. I haven't got a SIM card installed, so it's going to complain somewhat. And there we go. So, in exactly the same fashion that we had with the X10 Mini and X10 Mini Pro from last year, we have four corners, which have the sort of effectively like quick launch items. The home screen here with the time, Google search and voice search. We have a number of panels, five in total. So on this one we have uh, videos and music. On the other one, here we have weather. Coming back the other way, we have uh, Android Experience, Market and Browser shortcuts, and then shortcuts here for turning Wi Fi on and off, the audio, Bluetooth, synchronization, um, GPS, and the uh, backlight brightness, which we can turn on or up and down basically. Uh, going back to the middle, how uh, do we do that? In the corners, we have email which is rotating that way around, messaging effectively. In this corner we have media, so it pops out as you can see there, uh, rather than just being the one item we have uh, music, uh, yeah, that looks like video and FM radio. In this corner we have contacts, so all your contacts don't have anybody on here yet because we haven't synchronized with any of our accounts. And then this side we have basically the phone dialer, within the phone dialer we have phone call or contacts and favorites and just a dead straightforward numeric pad for dialing numbers. Uh, that with the capacity of touch screen means it works you know, just as you'd expect pretty effectively. The bottom of the launcher, so in here we have contacts, phone, messaging, browser, timescape settings, uh, well camera and email, there are multiple pages here which I managed to click on, there are multiple pages here 
so we've got Android Market and Facebook, Navigation, Gmail, and then we have YouTube, Downloads, Experience Hotshots, uh, UEFA.com, Wave Secure and Virus Scan pre-installed there uh, if you're concerned about viruses on your Android handset. We've also got Neo Reader. And then finally on the last page we've got uh, Play Now Store, Moxia Pro, uh, Update Center and Lightware Manager. Most of these things are very straightforward and standard. There are a few things on here that are more unusual uh, that uh, Sony Ericsson are providing here such as the Wave Secure. Um, there's some games by PopCap there as well. Uh, if we go back to the home screen, I don't know if we have a leap view. We don't have such a thing on here. At least we do. There we go. So it's the overview that we've seen on some of the other more recent uh, Sony Ericsson uh, Xperia handsets. Uh, although in this one, because I guess we've got the limited screen, they've chosen to make the widgets bounce around the screen uh, rather than being static. This is a view of everything or all the widgets and shortcuts that you have on all of your panels within the home screen. So uh, if you've lost anything, you can easily find it that way by just basically going in there. It's a little bit different and uh, uses the accelerometer there as you can see to actually bounce the uh, um, widgets and bits and pieces around the screen. It's a little bit of a different approach to sort of the overview that uh, you see on many of the other uh, handsets there, at, uh, well, the other um, Android handsets out on the market, really. Uh, down to the bottom, we can go to settings, and we're going to go and turn on the wireless, and we'll turn the Wi-Fi on, go into the Wi-Fi settings, and we'll go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi network. If we do it this way around, uh, well, we can use touchscreen to enter text, but because we have the quality keyboard, we can go ahead and use that. There we go, and it's coming out that we're obtaining an IP address, we're connected, and we are indeed all set up. So, now that we are set up, we can do and take a quick look at the browser. She's complaining here at the moment about wanting a SIM card, and well, let's go ahead and... Well, I can't use multi-touch or predictive text keyboards, so I never have been able to, so rather than struggle, let's go and use the physical QWERTY. There we go. Uh, like any new keyboard, it takes a little while to get used to the layout, so you don't have to push shift for full stop, for example. And why aren't we loading? There we go. Let's have another go. Wait for the page to load. There we go. Progress bar at the top, let's move in a little bit slowly. I'm using broadband and Wi Fi connection. There we go, it's kind of kicked off a little bit now. And in this landscape orientation, we seem to have a reasonable amount of room, 480 pixels wide and uh, 320 high. Double tap to zoom in and zoom out, as you can see. Uh, we can scroll around, scroll is pretty smooth. Two finger zooming is supported through uh, the actual multi touch on the keyboard, on the screen rather. So that's pretty straightforward. I can rotate this way around. It is a bit limited, 320 by 480 pixels uh, for web browsing and only a 3 inch display. It's not terrible by any means, uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. If you're going to be doing an awful lot of surfing on the web, um, you probably want something with a higher res and a larger screen, but it's not terrible by any means. Uh, as I say, scrolling seems pretty fluid, it seems to work quite well. So uh, no great shakes there. Back home, we go and take a look at some of the other things we've got on here, so we obviously looked at the browser. Let's take a Google Maps. There we go. And location settings. Oh, I haven't enabled the sources in the system settings. So let's go and quickly do that. Location and security, so let's turn those on. And then we get back out of there and have another go at Google Maps. As you can see at the top, it's now flashing with uh, the GPS icon, trying, we're trying to pick up a connection. And there we go, we've got a location accurate within 50 meters. And we can zoom around, 
scroll around, change the layers if you want to. To satellite, it's all pretty standard stuff. It's standard implementation um, of Google Maps, but it works just, just, just right, basically. We pull down at the top. We have notifications at the top. So current network is not available because I don't have a SIM card, and it's telling me about registering my McAfee Wave Secure, which I won't bother to do right now. Then down the bottom, we have uh, things like setup guide, and we have sync, Gmail, Facebook, and Android Market. WhatsApp's pre-installed, as you can see there. But what I'm actually looking for is. Uh, the YouTube client, which I've gone past a couple of times already, and we'll do a quick search for my channel. Again, I'm not going to resort to that keyboard. Leo D unboxing. Leo D being my alias on YouTube. I'm sure many of you know by now. So let's just go and pick one of these. Yeah, okay, let's take a look at the Neo unboxing video. It's buffering as you can see there with the spinny circle. It's taking a little while. Could be indicative of uh, connection speed. I live in the middle of nowhere, so my broadband speed's pretty rubbish. It's taking quite a while, my G. And there we go. And we can rotate this around again. So it is a standard implementation of uh, the YouTube client for Android, but it's a fortunately the Android implementation, the YouTube client basically is very very good anyway. So uh, it is there. And I'll go back home. We'll take a quick look at Android Market, and we'll sign into the account. Okay, that takes us into the Google account. Just wait for that to load, we'll accept the settings, or accept terms and conditions I should say. And once we come up, you'll notice that the time has automatically set itself now. And we load Android Market. Again, this is a standard implementation of Android Market, I mean there aren't too many varieties of it. But because we're using a Sony Ericsson handset, we have the Sony Ericsson recommendations. Um, preferred items here, all the suggestions, so Skype. Uh, some few things there that we definitely would want to uh, take a look at and probably install on uh, almost any Android handset. At the top here we come up with a notification that there are updates available and also we can do searching for uh, whatever we want. So we might search for, for the hell of it, like a, for a quadrant. So we do a quick benchmark. Project State Edition, and we'll go ahead and install that. Download. Other things that he's telling us about there's an update for is YouTube, Google Maps, and the uh, Clockwork ROM manager that we downloaded on uh, another handset some time ago. Wait for Quadrant to download. It's taking a little while. While that's doing that, let's go back and go back to see what else we have installed. So we have music. Let's see if we've got any. We have a couple of sample yes, tracks. The sound is very good actually out of that. It's pretty impressive. Consider it's only a fairly small loudspeaker. It's uh, quite a good sound out of that. Very impressive actually. Very impressive. Uh, in terms of what else we have, we have, we go into settings from here, we've got gallery. And we have some samples, including video. which is playing quite nicely. We've got the Bravia engine technology on here as well, um, so that means that uh, really video playback um, is, is very good. And we also have a couple of other sample images on here. Again, screen's pretty decent, coupled with the Bravia engine technology does a great job. Let's see, we have Quadrant installed successfully. Okay, so we're going to run the full benchmark quickly, or hopefully quickly. shouldn't take too long to go through. So we've done CPU, we've done the memory, I.O. and here we go. So that's 2D animation there, it was running at around 60 frames a second. Uh, that's running at around, averaging around 20 and upwards. There we go. 
not doing too bad actually. And there we go, 67 frames per second. There, bear in mind that uh, it is half VGA screen, so you may be getting frame rates that are somewhat higher than other handsets. There we go, and let's get our results. That seemed to be running pretty quickly, there we go. Wow, that's fast. 15, 1547. That is a good result. It, um, it really is, actually. Um, compared to some of the other handsets we've seen recently with uh, much higher specification. Yeah, so that's a, yeah, it really is quite a good result. This is just a benchmark and an indicator, but it's definitely, uh, definitely interesting to see. Well, I guess that uh, covers the basics. This has been the Sony Ericsson Xperia Mini Pro. We'll have a full review for you over the next couple of weeks. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tracyandmatt or facebook.com slash tracyandmatt.co.uk. Uh, I'll say I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmatt.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.